to Halcyon, the city of hopes and dreams. Super powered super villains lay their super schemes. And if you want to take them on, you're gonna need a team to win the fight. But for the varsity nights. Teenagers by day, superheroes by night Young and strong and daring and ready to fight When evil comes around to take a bite Look for the varsity nights Do, 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 do. Inspector, Spector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Spectacle. <laughs> so, ready? Yep. Tyler, pick up your popcorn. <laughs> what does the approach of the team down to the tunnels look like? You have to remember that the Aegis agents are patrolling it. I think we should go down the place that I went through cool. last time, because I'm imagining... You are that... trying to be stealthy still. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we don't really want Aegis involved. I mm -hmm. think none of us really like them. Uh, yeah. Nell has been this whole time in full hockey gear. Mm -hmm. I think Ricochet is just like zooming ahead, getting impatient, running back to everybody else. Come on, what, what's, what's taking everybody so long? <laughs> this goes on for a while. Oh no, I, I have super speed. <laughs> I think the trip down there isn't too difficult for you all to execute. You have a couple of run-ins with the, the Aegis security team that's patrolling down below there, but they do not appear to be looking for you specifically. In fact, what you're realizing as you overhear them is that they're tracking something that appears to be moving whenever they get close to it. Hmm. It might be the door. Yeah. So are we all, the four of us waltzing in there and be like, hey, we're here for the Meta Academy. Or are we splitting up, two of us stealthy, two of us not? Uh... That's a great question. Let's just go in guns blazing. I like that <laughs> idea. So ultimately, okay. yeah, we do want to like try and take this guy out as quick as we can. But like Ricochet said, this is going to be a trap. There's no like back door or anything. They control the only entrance. If we don't come here when they want us to, they'll probably just, you know, disappear and continue doing whatever weird stuff they're doing. For safety's sake, I'll take the ceiling. Okay, okay. I'll try and keep their attention. Ricochet, you can get a better sense of the area quicker than any of the rest of us. On it! What about me? I'm Big boom. Me. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, on our signal, that is. Yeah. Which is going to be, uh... Big boom! Pretty much as, as soon as we see this doctor lecture. We've been talking about Nell saving people and not causing harm, and then they're telling me that I'm the big boom. And I feel like that is what I am to them. Can I bump my freak up? Mm. That does make sense. I feel like we're all kind of talking like, around. Nobody had an idea for him. He had yeah, to ask, yeah. and then they just said, oh, big boom. I, I get the sense that this is a label shift you want. I like the idea of it. Yeah. Okay. Does it put anything else down or just move? Oh yeah, it's got to move something down. So, so mundane. Mundane. savior. Oh, savior. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, because savior, big booms don't save. They boom. So I think um, we see a shot of the four of you uh, standing right outside of the Meta Academy door. It looks exactly as you saw it previously, save for one little note that is written on front of it. Tied to the doorknob by a piece of twine and hang off it. It just says, come in. Alright, we got our plan. I'll try to keep attention. Ricochet kind of zips around, assesses the situation, mm -hmm. and goes from behind if possible. Diego up top to drop mm -hmm. down. And Spectre, you're sort of with me. Once he's distracted, you and I can just try and take him down together, all right? Yeah. Okay. You doing okay? Big boom. <laughs> yeah, you might be better at that than I am. Doors slowly start creaking open as you make your way in to execute your plan. 
I think Ricochet immediately zips off away from the team. Diego crawls up to the upper half of the door frame. And as you do all come into this area, you see the empty lecture hall once again, except there is written in chalk on the chalkboard, mm -hmm. welcome freshman students of the Meta Academy. And on a pedestal on the stage is a large book that you can't quite read what it says from the entrance. Can I go read it? Oh yeah, you said you wanted to basically assess the situation the moment that you went in. Yep. So go ahead and roll that. Nine. Nine. Uh, seven for nine, ask one. How could we best end this quickly? How could we best end this quickly? Your thing that you want to accomplish is... Is saving the people that are mind controlled. Saving the people that are mind controlled. Because she figures like her dad is one, her brother has been affected by it and is likely one, Amy has been affected by it and is likely one, any other people. To save any per given person who has been mind controlled, so as you figured out previously, a sufficiently large emotional shock would bring something out of it. Okay. Now that said, you're not entirely sure how many people there might be here. You think that the best way to save all these people who are mind controlled based on the file that you read, Dr. Lecture is a mentalist, which means that he does have to be like present to give suggestions to people. If you take him down, it doesn't matter if he's implanted stuff with them, he can't trigger them. Okay. But as you are coming into this empty hall, the doors close behind you, and as they boom, echo throughout the hall, a voice comes on the speakers, saying, Hello! Welcome all to my Meta Academy. I'm so glad that you all could make it. May I suggest that you all take a seat? And all four of you begin feeling this urge to go sit down and be good students. So let me hand these out. Ooh. Take this. This is a custom move. Which is a thing that masks encourages, and I think that's really cool. Huh. So I want to know, what is everybody doing in response to this? Resist. For sure. Everybody's attempting to resist. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's go around the table. What'd you get? I got a seven. Cool. Which means I mark a condition and choose one. You do what he says, still. Okay. But... Importantly, if you cancel his influence, then he can't suggest to you anymore. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. What did you get? I got a nine. Okay, same So choice. same thing. Yep. I also wanted to cancel his influence over Kitty, take plus one forward against him, and then I was gonna mark angry. Okay. Yeah, I'm debating between afraid and angry. I'm already afraid. <laughs> Diego, what did you get? Seven. So what is your choice there? I'm gonna cancel his influence over me and take cool. plus one forward Pretty against cool. him. Everybody yeah. So I'll stay yeah. under yes. the roof. Great option. And you got me? Yeah. The bottom option will be, you have to do what he says, but you also become immune, essentially. I'll do that. Okay. So as this comes over the loudspeakers, all of you feel this compulsion to go sit down and be good students. And all of you do that, coming down from your various hiding spots and taking seats right at the front of the class. Just to be clear, out of game, this means I get my monologue. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. We're all going to be good students and not interrupt. Mm -hmm. Diego drops down from the ceiling very yep. cat-like. <laughs> turns back into his uh, reptilian default state and sits down. I thought I was the kitty. So, um, a, a dark shadow comes onto the stage, which is very dimly lit, except for one beam of light down upon the book on the center podium. From the shadow, a voice comes. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today for the inaugural class of the Meta Academy. Now, you might be wondering why I've called you all here, but you've all proven yourselves to be worthy attendants, to be worthy progenitors of the next step of humanity's evolution. Now, I'm sure you've all noticed that every single one of you is a metahuman individual. Back in the day, they had another word for these such people. 
gods. And they had another word for those who believed that they could control gods such as us. And as he steps into the light, you see a person who you haven't seen before, but he's carrying the mask that he used to be Mr. Han. Hubris. So, all I ask from you is that you sign your paperwork, and then I'll let you all be on your way. And as he says this, um, from within your desks, like a little trap door opens and a contract appears in front of each of you. The text of which basically reads that you pledge to attend and serve the Meta Academy. Is there a pencil there? Oh yes. Uh, is this part of the original? No. Okay. This is a different ask. Okay, so he's essentially not compelling us to sign. Yes, he hasn't said the word suggest. Mm -hmm. Tyson will sign it, but he spells fart face. <laughs> Tyson, your signature had basically burned itself off the paper. Diego. I just hold the pencil and stare at it. And I'll just sort of looks over at everyone else, looks down at the paper, and is like, Diego raises his hand. Um, yes, I see there are questions. Academy? That implies school? It implies learning? What have you... What do you have to teach us? Diego, was it? Well, that's what your name was before you took on the moniker Chameleon? Gamaleon. Hmm. But yes, Diego. I can teach you to control your powers. I can teach you all to improve yourselves, and I can give you what you want. Wouldn't it be nice to look normal again? I can give you that, Diego. Come at me on. <laughs> what are you, scientist? You have an MD? No. Come on. I'm better. And in exchange, we have to pledge ourselves to you? Only four years. And Please, I'm not even making you pay tuition. What would we be required to do in those four years when pledged to you? Oh, similar things to what your friend uh, Mr. Squalor has been doing for me. Finding other recruits, testing them. Alright, so go around and fight people to see if they meet your standards and then they're also pledged to your service? To what end? So you can create your own little army? So that we can take our rightful place You've seen what those soldiers out there are doing. They're attempting to track you all down and to try to control us. They have no right. We are the new gods of this world. We deserve to form a new Olympus. And with your assistance, I will lead us all to this new Olympus. Look. I've already done something for you as a show of good faith. As he says that, he motions to the side of the stage and Carson Carmichael walks out. And Carson Carmichael... Senior? Yes, senior. And he says, Ah! Meta humans! Capes! Teenage capes! Love them! Especially love Ricochet! She's my favorite one! Or he! I don't know who that person is! I'd much rather people, you know, didn't hate Ricochet and all, but manipulating people like that's still pretty shitty. And personally, I don't want to be superior to other people, I just want to be equal. Me too. Tyson, you are getting the sense that your powers could potentially break your teammates and yourself out of this suggestion. However, you're also pretty sure that to do that you would have to get into people's heads, which runs the risk of hurting them. Are you going to continue writing obscenities on the paper? <laughs> I, I, was just, I thought you were going to say things to Tyson as, as he was writing. Yeah. I was thinking doing something similar. Okay. 
waiting for a sign. And he's like, the last time he did something aggressive, it was really bad. That's when I hurt the people around him. He's gonna just put his pencil down. I do like the hands and lap thing. So that's where you two have gone wrong. You two want to be equal, but you were never equal. From the moment that you got your abilities, you were always superior. And the sooner that you accept that, the better. And it's not really superior, right? It's just different. For some people, it's, you know, being super smart, curing diseases, and others are like crazy strong and can do all sorts of cool things in the Olympics, and... Can any of them lift a bus? Oh, uh, yeah. Have you seen the strongman competitions? They can like... Above their head? <laughs> well, that I don't know, but that's not the point, right? Exactly. The point is that they will never be as strong as we are. I mean, I also can't lift a bus above my head, and I... He's gonna try to shift your labels here. <laughs> He's going ship superior up mundane down. Bus shifter! Oh yeah, absolutely gonna resist that. Okay. Wait, sorry. He can't. He lost influence over you. Aha! So he's, <laughs> okay. he's gonna try, and it's just not uh -huh. gonna work. I think Ricochet is gonna raise her hand. Okay. How long does it last on the city councilman? As long as I so choose. I have told him that he should be kinder to the capes at this school. And what does that do to all his other core beliefs? They don't matter. My will is absolute. <sighs> Red flag. So is he a person anymore? Or is he just an extension of you? Well, that's a question for a philosopher, not a history teacher. But I'd like to think that all of those students up there are nothing more than tools. Can During I? all this, Nell's so, like looking at everyone else being like, what, what do I can't do anything? So mechanically speaking, you basically cannot directly engage any threats, but you can always do things that attack him on an emotional level. Okay. Like provoking, like trying to pierce his mask, things along those lines. Okay, I'm trying to think of Greek mythology analog here. Closest I've got so far is Icarus. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm probably going to go with that. Okay. And just tell him, I mean, if you want to go with everything else, you might as well just consider yourself Icarus, right? So what are you trying to get him to do? I guess in a way it's kind of provoke. I'm trying to see if I can get him to crack at all, mm -hmm. in some ways, loosen his hold a little bit. So go ahead and roll plus superior for me. Plus superior. That's three. Okay, I think he says um, in response, huh, nice attempt at a pull, but Icarus was once again just a man. I am not that. You only want to stick with your own mythology. Yeah, you're not a man, you're just a teacher. <laughs> well, if you want to go with my own mythology, and Nell is going to look at Diego very nervously, because Diego's the only other person outside of Nell's family who knows this, is going to then tell him, we're the ones who win the world. I beg your pardon? If you want to go back to my mythology, then we are the ones who end the world. Okay, I'm gonna let you roll provoke again. <laughs> but I will say that as part of um, the consequence from the last one, he's got influence over you again. All right, that's still a mess, that's a six. Somebody else can spend a team from the pool to assist if you want. I would. I was thinking like he would be trying to focus like psychic energy on mm -hmm. him to like hone in on him. Nell's goal with this was to point out that superiority isn't good and basically Spider-Man with great power comes great responsibility mm -hmm. and, and going with the direction of yeah sure we can do things other people can't but that doesn't mean we're superior mm -hmm. because now we have all these other risks that other people do not. So that was Nell's direction with yeah we can end the world other people can't do that. That's a thing that we have to be aware of, be careful of every 
day that nobody else has to. We're not superior, we're just trading. And I think your psychic focus brings extra weight to Nell's words. You see Dr. Lecture kind of taken aback by this as he is considering what you're saying, and then he says, Fine, then you go. I don't need you. I have plenty of other subjects. Besides, your w wolf's blood type is too much for me to bother with anyways. Leave. <laughs> for the rest of the team, his focus seems to be wavering and you find yourselves a little bit more able to take any action that you would choose. Yeah, let, let's fucking... Rattle his brains. All right. That actually makes a lot of sense because if you do that, it might loosen his hold even more. Mm -hmm. I like to... Brain rattle them. That's okay. what the move's called, brain rattle. It's <laughs> still a big boom. It's just Inside internal. The okay. Roll to directly engage a threat. So that's an eight. Uh, does anybody want to assist with this? Two people would have to assist in order to mm -hmm. bump it up to a full success. You you just did your thing, so that's I don't fair. think we have an opportunity. I think Ricochet would want to assist by if the power is wavering, getting up from her chair and running towards the stage like she's gonna charge him. Mm. This would be to create an opportunity yeah, for so, her allies. So she's distracting him. Yeah, so she's like, distracting him. She's not necessarily gonna do any damage with this. Right. Diego, do you want to assist as well to put Travis into a full success? I really want someone to throw a chair at him. That's right. That's, that's the valid that's way. Just, yeah. My view just worked. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. No, I got it. You said there were pencils. Yes. So I tap the rubber uh -huh. and then I stretch to whatever the hell there's in the ceiling to uh -huh. grab onto something and then essentially use my legs to fling a chair at him. <laughs> nice. Yes. The three of you all attack him in unison and he moves with the deafness of somebody who has been in a fight before to dodge Kitty in the chair at the same time. But as he does that, he runs directly into the metaphysical. Boom. It's super cheesy, but I think it's for a kid. What I imagine is this big football player, like this phantom blue football player, New York Giants represent. And he just goes in and tries to tackle his mm -hmm. brain. So it's like, you're getting a TBI directly okay. to the source. All right, pick two options from directly engage a threat, please. I would be be doing something to one, resist or avoid their blows. Okay. So it's like me taking cover and I want to frighten the opposition. Okay. You get the sense that he was counting on his uh, hypnotic suggestions since you've been in class with him for so long, he's had so much time to plant all this. Mm -hmm. The fact that you have broken out, so you can see the fear on his face as he grabs his head reeling backwards and then he yells out, I suggest, councilman, that you handle these capes. And your father no. puts up his dukes oh, no. and starts charging forwards. Oh, okay. You gotta kill him. I, no, 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 no. <laughs> I would like to take my moment of truth. Okay. Oh. Yeah. You beat out your moment of truth, please. I may. <laughs> the mask is a lie, and some piece of you has always known that. Doesn't matter if others can see it. You're the one that can do the impossible. Mask off, costume on, and you're going to save the damn day. Of course, you better hope nobody nasty is watching. Fucking Dr. Lecture already knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is basically Kitty taking the emotional shock. There is no way that her father is going to stay hypnotized when he realizes mm -hmm. that his daughter is ricochet. Yeah. <laughs> And that he is about to throw hands with her. Yeah. So she speed runs directly in front of him, takes the helmet off, is like, Daddy, stop! You see him immediately, his eyes refocus in on you, and he's just. Kid? Kitty? Yeah. Kick his ass! This is still your moment of truth. You got a lot more grounds that you can cover with this. Incredible! <gasps> I'm made of rubber. Can uh -huh. I slingshot ricochet somewhere? Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yes! Can it, like a combination of like Nell and Spectre toss up other like the desks or chairs and whatnot for ricochet to literally ricochet off of? <gasps> oh, yes. so she like runs into rubber Diego, bounces off, and then like. <laughs> <laughs> 
do this incredible maneuver as you see Dr. Lecture, he's attempting desperately to hit you, but you are too fast <laughs> and too determined, and you come down on it hard. Just coming down into a like flying drop kick on Dr. Lecture. And his head just like slams into the, the stage. You see some cracks of the wood where he hit. And Dr. Lecture is out. Hey! Uh, Nell runs up and gives Kitty Slash Ricochet a really big hug. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry he didn't tell you. That I was so cool. I grab uh, Tyson and then I, as rubber, wrap myself for a big group hug. <laughs> so yeah, that's a moment of truth. You can just do it. <laughs> Where's Jordan? He's not. That's here. a good question. Where is Jordan? That's what Tyson's thinking about. Yeah. Do you want to try to find out? Mm hmm. And in the group hug, so did... Nell's also going to ruffle Spectre's hair <laughs> and say, That was such a good big boom. You did so good. And it, 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 I imagine he's not there because he's trying to mm -hmm. pop himself out. If you want to try to find where Jordan is, yeah. you can try to unleash your powers to try to find him right now. Nine. Uh, you should have at least one more condition marked because the hypnosis beforehand, which is good for you in this case, because that means you get your burn for free. Okay, so that's the three mm -hmm. three burns. So with elemental awareness, I like the idea where he's just like kind of checking out mm -hmm. and he's not in complete control. As you start trying to figure out where Jordan might be, you end up inside of the mind of the person who is currently beneath your feet. Like literally? Well, not exactly, but he is currently on the stage, knocked out, and you are all in the middle of a big group hug, or basically right next to him. And I think he's mumbling, Jordan. Yes. And you see a conversation between Dr. Lecter and Jordan, where Dr. Lecter is handing Jordan a key. A large, ornate key. Decoration on which seems to match the doorway. Dr. Lecter says to him, Mr. Squalor, it's up to you, should I fail, to continue this Meta Academy tradition. Go out, find others. They cannot stop our new Olympus from forming. And Jordan just like grabs the key for him and, and says, <laughs> Yeah, whatever, Gramps. <laughs> I'll see you around. Soon, you know. Those kids don't kick your ass. Unlike you, Mr. Squalor, I have experience. Yeah, well, they'll surprise you. And then Jordan Squalor flies off and you see him disappearing over the horizon. Hmm. Um, Come back to celebrating, yeah! yeah. yeah exactly, um... Does this count as a triumphant celebration? If you want to trigger some of your moves, then you can do so by basically following that script. All right. So in this one, basically, are you looking at them in this celebration as if they are equals? Yeah. Okay, and what happens then? Give them influence over me and mark potential. So you can choose, <laughs> so please choose one person to do this to, essentially. I'm leaning toward Kitty because that feels like more important in the moment. Mm -hmm. Just learned mm -hmm. that Kitty is Ricochet. As much as Kitty was apologizing for not telling Nell, they just do not care. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. <laughs> They're just really happy to see you and really excited to learn this information and tell you how cool you are. And not that it's going to probably come up too much given that we're wrapping up here. Uh, because you used your moment of truth, you can now lock one label in place that will never change So, um, I think we see a little bit of like the cleanup afterwards as Aegis is coming in way too late, like they usually do. Mm -hmm. I think at this point, Ricochet has like re-helmeted. Mm -hmm. I would like to take a moment to approach Kitty's dad. Okay. As they're cleaning up, you okay. see you get a shot of yeah. like Diego in the middle of this conversation with uh, Kitty's dad, and he's saying like, maybe consider I don't know talking less shit to be blunt about people like me, people like Ricochet. I mean, you saw what Hati can do with Spectre. 
can do. Listen, Diego, right? Yeah. I don't really have a huge deal with you. I didn't realize who, exactly who you were, but now that I do. But that's the problem. See, you didn't know who I was, so you judged me. You, sh you should be judged by your actions, no? Of course. And to be perfectly honest, your team has done some very good things. You've also, you know, blown some stuff up along the way. I just want to make sure that your team can be accountable. And I will be having a long conversation with, uh... He looks around to make sure that nobody else is listening in with, with Kitty about that part. Yeah. yeah. Kid, Kitty but, has done more for us than you can imagine, so go easy on her. Oh, well, she's my daughter. If I were, were, went easy on my kids, then they wouldn't be as successful as they are. <laughs> I'll hit her if I want. That's, oh, no. that's not. That's not really how it should work. Also, I was gonna take this uh, opportunity to ask you if I could ask your daughter to the homecoming dance, but honestly, I don't. Need Absolutely her not. Well, I don't need your permission. <laughs> she can make her own decisions. She's a strong, independent girl. She's not allowed to date until she's at least twenty-five. Oh, that. Is, okay. Goodbye. Man. <laughs> Bob shows up to pick up Tyson as we see like the sun rising over the situation. There's like sirens in the background as Bob goes over to Tyson. He says, hey, sports, heard about what happened. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. Great, great. Well, tell you what, we can go back home and um, I'll make you your favorite food. We can order from Slice and Dice if you don't want my cooking. I've saved up enough so that we can uh, order pizza again. What kind of jacket is he wearing? I think he doesn't quite realize it, but he is wearing his Aegis jacket right now. Tyson looks at his jacket. Cause he didn't know that before. Yep. And he was confused about the statement a weeks ago about the security. Mm -hmm. Sees the jacket and feels this twinge of Betrayal, and I think you notice him looking at the yep. jacket, right? Oh, um, right. This uh, I, I was gonna tell you at some point, Champ, but you know, since well, since you blew up my old job, I had to look for a new place, and then they they offered me they offered to when he when he said blew up my old job, he's gonna go walk purposefully, tearfully the way that we got into the sewers to see Diego, and he's just gonna go to Diego's place, whether Diego's there or not. Hold on, wait. And you know, he just kinda like stares after you. Yeah. And on the other side of things, we see Agent Hammerhead attempting to shout down Skull with Hati, Nell as Hati basically like, standing to the side, Agent Hammerhead is just like, it was an absolute catastrophe. They didn't involve us in any way, shape, or form. People could have gotten hurt. You gotta keep your family under control. Listen, did people get hurt? Well, no, but, well, sounds like things went pretty well then. Well, you know what? They still haven't, we still haven't found where that uh, piece of obsidian has gone off to. So that could be anywhere. <laughs> You, you, ever, you think of that? You're leaving loose ends all over the place. <laughs> no, walks over. I think uh, Bell dropped Hockey for the group hug, and then once Aegis showed up, was like, oh, I guess I should probably be in costume for this, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seeing Kitty put everything back on as Ricochet, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I guess I'll do the same. Mm -hmm. Walks over as Hathi sort of stands next to Skull and says, oh, Actually, we already have that under control. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, where is it then, huh? Well, I figured the fewer people who know where it is, the better, right? People oh. like Dr. Lecture could just get right into your mind. Well, that's, uh, that's kind of not really up to you to decide. That's on our jurisdiction, all right? I don't know. We got it back. Listen, I'm gonna go talk to somebody else. <laughs> um, and I think the team kind of comes together for one last like look at the sun as it rises. <laughs> he, uh, Diego is comforting uh, Tyson and saying, mm. Hey, you can come over to my spot whenever. It'll stink like crazy. But honestly, Hati's place is probably the best place to go. 
If you, if you need refuge. I don't know. I think he feels too vulnerable to say anything. Mm -hmm. I think Kitty kind of looks around. I'm assuming there's nobody else yep. around at this point. And she's like, don't mind if I just kind of raise the visor. I can't really see the sunrise that well. <laughs> um, right before you're about to do that, a large limousine just like pulls right up in front of you all. The tires screech as you see. This thing is like souped up to heck. Like it's glowing. There, there's clearly custom work done to every single part of this car. And a man steps out from the front door, comes around to the far end and opens it up. And a woman steps out. She looks to be in her 50s or so. She's got this like stern look on her face, but she is smiling, still managing to look stern somehow. And on her very smart business suit, you see a little name tag that reads J. Hashimoto. Hello, Varsity Knights, I believe. Uh, yeah? I would like to congratulate you on a very well done mission. The four of you have so much potential and I would very much like to assist with that development. You've already kept my no good son safe two, three times at this point. So I wanted to extend you all an offer. A sponsorship. Uh... Wait, your son? Yes. That's Chet? Chet the douchebag. No, sorry. Ah. Uh, uh, we, we, um. We'll take why it. Do, why don't you send, send the details? And now quickly writes down the address of the wolves dead. Mm -hmm. uh, send the details here and we can discuss. We just sort of, you know, also had this really upsetting sponsorship offer. So, you know, we want to make oh, sure we understand. Yeah. Uh, of course, I uh, understand. Uh, Diego like whispers something <laughs> into Tyson's ear and then goes, uh, does his sponsorship come with like housing? Yes. Housing, a base, resources, other monetary compensation as necessary. I will take it. You don't have to have it. I would like to have this very much. Um, it's like, I already got a base. I understand that. Listen, I just wanted to offer this. There are no strings attached. You wouldn't have to do missions for us. I just want to make sure that this sort of talent is fostered and encouraged. Wait a minute. Would Chad have to be there? Funny you should mention that. Oh, no. <laughs> I do have one string to offer you. I didn't have to use like a palace for that one. My son has expressed an interest in joining your team yeah. and as she motions to the door a very handmade ninja costume yes. <laughs> is uh, on Chet as he steps out with a bamboo kendo sword <laughs> strapped to his back he's got like throwing stars on his belt oh my god I was hoping that perhaps you could direct him and as he looks at all of you, he says, Call me Nightblade. <laughs> we won't call you Chet. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have to reassess the situation, thanks. Uh, we'll, varsity Knights roll out. Well, technically, it's not a story, it's Chet. Well, it is, yeah. We'll, we'll call you. Very well. I look forward to seeing the rest of your work, regardless. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> as like, the whole group is walking away, Nell, like, walking backwards, just sort of says, You got, you got the address to send <laughs> the, the, the details? I have the address. Great. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is he dropping shit off there? Say, well, I have to leave him here. I've got to go to <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Chad looks move. back at uh, his mom and just is like, so can I, can I, so can I get it like a ride oh. back home? Oh. <laughs> and that, that I think is where we can end it. Diego yeah, didn't even get to ask Kitty the homecoming. Oh, we know that's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where we get the next issue. <laughs>
everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our special Roleplay Radio Summer Arc. If you enjoyed the Varsity Nights, fear not. They will return for more adventures and teenage drama in the future. I'd like to give a huge thank you to our players, Rin Garnett, Tyler Rubin, and Nikki Aguilar-Thompson. And a very special thanks to Michael Yang, who not only prepared this wonderful miniseries, but who also scored and produced some of the music for it. I bid you goodbye for now, but stay tuned. Roleplay Radio will return in the fall with Season 2 of our Strixhaven campaign, and the F-Squad making their triumphant return to Magic School. In the meantime, you can like, comment, subscribe, or even join our Discord server. I also encourage you to check out our World Anvil, where you can find lots of fun stories and lore related to all things Roleplay Radio. Thanks again! I'm Alex Aguilar-Thompson, and I can't wait to hang out with you again in the fall. See you then!